I'm Tom Johnson, Thomas Johnson Antique Furniture Repair in Gorham, Maine. This is a nice old chest of drawers. It has a lot of sentimental value to the family. Uh, I first looked at it, I'm not, wasn't sure how old it is. Uh, but you notice at first an unusual drawer arrangement and you notice the legs. The top drawer is the largest, 8 inches or 20 centimeters, then 5 inches, 12.7 centimeters, 6 inches, 15 centimeters, 7 inches, 18 centimeters. Let's take the drawers out and see what they look like. Nice hand cut dovetails. The drawer sides are on the thin side. The bottom is extremely rough and, and thick. You can see that the taper sides were shaped by a hand plane. The inside of the cabinet is pretty much what you'd expect. There are two rails that go side to side at the top of the cabinet. The rails are most likely dovetailed into the side pieces. The top is held on by four screws. The other rails and the bottom rail uh, also appear to be dovetailed. And all these dovetails are hidden by a board nailed vertically, about three-eighths, one centimeter. The rear legs are just what you'd expect. This, of course, is an extension of the side and this is the back. It's unusual there's no glue block and it doesn't look like there ever was one. And that brings us to the front legs which really give us the best clue as to the age. So I'm going to uh, say this piece is American Empire. Uh, legs have a lot to do with that It's because it's so simple. I don't think it was made in a big factory. Uh, so I'll say uh, 1830, 1840, somewhere in there. So there are two major issues with this piece and then some minor ones. First is this top. Uh, it's seen a lot of hard use. It's all worn. It's scratched. It's, it's actually gouged. The other big problem are the drawers. What's happened is that the back plates of the handles have carved very deep grooves around the handles. I'm not quite sure how that happened. I'm going to start with these drawer fronts. I want to fill this damaged area with uh, epoxy putty. And so I want to experiment mixing stain with the epoxy putty, see if I can get the exact right color. Um, by using epoxy putty, I'm going to minimize the sanding. I don't want to sand this, or I put it this way, I want to keep sanding to an absolute minimum. This piece has a lot of texture to it. Uh, you can even see what appear to be hand plane marks like in the top. Okay, I want to fill these big defects around the knobs in such a manner that I hopefully won't have to like sand them, maybe not even sand them at all. And so it's going to be tough. Uh, each drawer varies in color. I'm going to use Elmer's wood filler, uh, which is a water-based filler. I'll use Mohawk Blendall stains as a colorant. I'm using those because I have them. I think any powdered pigment will work or uh, acrylic colors, probably uh, a lot of different kinds of colors. I've already been experimenting a bit. I'm using rock maple, dark brown mahogany, and dark red mahogany. This stuff seems a little dry, even though this is a unopened can. I have had it for a while. A little bit of water seems to have revived it fine. Just a couple drops. I would advise anyone to buy a brand new uh, jar of putty to do something like this. This one was unopened, but I've had it for a little while. I'm not sure how long. Literally drops of water if needed. Now some brown mahogany. Checking the color. Got a ways to go. I keep adding drops of water and, and more of the color, the dark brown mahogany, 
starting to get there. I want to add some of the red mahogany and a little more of the dark, dark brown, I should say. I've got a good color here, I think, but I forgot to do something. I got a little ahead of myself. I just want to uh, clean this drawer front first, and I'll use a crud cutter, a spray rag. Okay, now this is slow drying. Not not too slow. I mean, it'll dry in about, I think, about 15 minutes or so. But it gives you plenty of time to smooth it out. Dip my rag in a little bit of water, just a little, and start cleaning off the excess. I don't want to drag my rag over that deepest part there. This is a big uh, razor blade type scraper. I'm going to let this set for about 15 minutes and then I'm going to go over it with a uh, gray scotch bite pad and water very gently. Okay, this is dried for about uh, a half an hour actually, so I'm going to scrub it now with a gray scotch bite pad with a little bit of water on it. Just gently. It cleans off the excess. Now I won't know till this dries and I put a little shellac on it how I did with the color. I let this dry overnight. I realized you can't really rush uh, water-based products. And now I'm going to go over it lightly with a dry scotch bite pad and then uh, brush a little color shellac on that area, see what it looks like. Yeah, I think that's good. That's a good level of darkness and uh, you know, I'm going to stain these other light areas a bit, so it's going to work out pretty well. So I've applied the putty to each knob area, and I'm kind of smoothing it out with a wet putty knife. I want to take off as much excess as possible. At the same time, I don't want to, I found the first one I was dishing out the big uh, area, so I just want to be careful not to dish it out, but smooth it out. But I keep watching my clock, going back to the first one. This one's been about 15 or 20 minutes. I'm going to carefully, you know, attempt to level it off with the scraper. And all this is to minimize how much sanding, how much sanding I'm not going to do, at least I hope not to. I'm still trying to figure out the optimum amount of time to let this dry before I try to uh, get rid of the excess. This has been uh, drying for about an hour. And I'm taking the gray pad and water and just really gently Don't want to dish that out. Looks good so far, but I'll leave it alone. You can see that the others aren't ready yet. I mean, these really deep areas are still wet. And I could work around the edges here a little bit to smooth this out. Okay, I, I let these dry overnight. I could tell I was working them too much yesterday. I was afraid of dishing out those deep areas I filled. Especially because this putty shrinks a bit as it dries, this area is now dished out a little bit, so I've got to redo it. So I want to see what I can do with this one, which I didn't wipe off too much yesterday. I'll see what I can do with this scraper. Okay, I think I've done as I've gone as far as I can go with the scraper, and so now I'm going to uh, sand very lightly, 320 gold and a block. I'm sanding very lightly. I'm, I'm 
barely putting any pressure on the block. Luckily this putty sands easily, so I'm hoping I can get it to where I want it without going through the existing finish. I'm getting there, just taking my time. This stuff sands easily. Okay, I think I got this where I want it. It's nice and level. I'm going to apply a little stain to this area. I'm going to use an oil-based medium brown walnut stain. I think any oil-based stain that you might get would work. I like this mohawk stain. Uh, it's heavier body. It has more pigment in it, which can be good and bad. It's also very fast drying time. The assumption here is that the stain will only uh, take effect where there's raw wood in this repair area. It won't have any effect on the areas that are finished. I was so worried about my putty not being dark enough. Now, of course, it looks too dark. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to let it dry. We won't really know what it looks like until I put some finish on it. Okay, i am uh, got all my these repair areas sanded. I'm ready to stain them, but I also want to stain all these uh, really ragged edges and uh, places on these drawers. So I'll, first I'll hit those edges uh, just with 220. They, you can feel a little splintery or ragged. <laughs> just brought up a splinter right there. So I'm going to smooth them over a little bit. And this drawer front has a lot of nicks and scratches over the front of it. Okay, now onto the uh, case on top. Okay, the first steps uh, are going to be just to clean this. I'm going to use a crud cutter, which is uh, just some kind of, well they call it a degreaser. And I'm going to mix it with water. This is concentrated. So I'm going to add about uh, four ounces, about 120 milliliters of crud cutter in two quarts of water. And that's about, about two liters. Starting from the bottom and going up helps prevent uh, streaking. I forgot I got to do something about, I got to plug these holes. Yeah, this leg is loose. These screws above. Yeah, after I clean this, I got it. The next thing I'll do is take care of this leg, figure out what's going on with these screws. hammer marks. I imagine there's a nail there. There's a big nail there. Gotta love these hammer marks though. These might be dowels. And of course you can see a couple of Phillips head screws there. The other leg, the left leg, has uh, three screws, maybe a couple nails, but it's, uh, it's solid. There's two huge holes for screws on the inside but there's no screws in them.
these screws are so short they barely had any purchase in the block they were supposed to hold. There's a small dowel in there. I think there's another small dowel up in there. I may just break this thing off. Could be a dowel or a nail up in here. This is amazing. This thing looks like it's been maybe having problems very early in the game. I'm going to scrape these surfaces clean and uh, glue it back where it belongs. Okay, let's, uh, let's see what we got. Man, that's, that's good and sturdy. Okay, bit of a mess here. These are, you know, wooden pegs or dowels. I'll see if they hammer back in there. I'll put a little glue on it. This is a screw hole. I'll put a screw back in there, a longer screw. This screw hole, the screw, you can see there's a screw in there. That's the one I put in from the other side. In fact, it went in so deep it, it protruded, so I took it out, cut it off, put it back in there. I'll fill these with putty. I'm going to work a little glue into these pegs and then see if they'll go down where they belong. If they don't, I'll cut them off and just putty it up along with the rest. I'm going to use the same putty I used on the drawer fronts. And this leg has the same situation, three screws, uh, but they're, they're working fine. And luckily these holes are the right size for some plugs. All this sort of scraping and stuff on the top 
it all seems too shallow to uh, try to fill or anything. So I'm just going to sand the entire top, uh, not down to the bare wood here, but just to finish. Uh, I'm going to use this uh, 3M free cut 220 paper. top feels uh, really smooth now, but I kicked up quite a bit of dust. You know, a lot of people would make the case that this top should have been sanded down because of the extensive damage. I was thinking about that while I was sanding it, but uh, number one, the customer did not ask me to refinish this piece of furniture. They asked me if I could repair all the ugly damage to it. And number two, it, if you sanded this down, you'd lose the texture, which looks like hand planing marks. That's what it looks like anyway. If you did the top, well then you'd start looking at the sides and the rest of it. You might end up refinishing the entire cabinet. Once again, I'll use the Mohawk wiping stain, medium brown walnut. And uh, I'm going to go over the entire piece because I'm going to catch all these edges. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm anxious to get a coat on this, especially the top, I'm dying to see what it looks like. I'm going to be using the uh, Waterlox Tongue Oil Varnish. It's a very, very beautiful finish for antiques, especially if you brush it on, it's an old fashioned varnish, but also uh, it's extremely durable, which is why I like it for these uh, tops that are likely to see hard use. This is the area that was so badly damaged. It looks good. You can see there's areas around this top where it's trying to fisheye like crazy. So I'll get as much finish off my brush and then I'll just try to keep gently smoothing it out as it dries here. Of course this is a very slow drying finish. There are different ways to deal with fisheye, all depending on what finish you're using and how you're applying it. And um, with this brush on varnish, the first thing I do is what I'm doing now. No matter how you're doing it or what finish you're using, the basic idea is to get that contamination sealed in under the finish. So we'll let this dry and see what we got. I've got to coat the rest of it.
Uh, you know, the, I put this coat on, uh, the first coat on yesterday morning. It soaked in and dried so quickly that last night, off camera, I snuck in here and put another coat on, which has soaked in pretty well too. Now I'm going to go over this entire thing with a scotch Bright pad and give it uh, a third coat. I'm hoping it's the last coat. The top may need yet a fourth. We'll see. These surfaces are not, you know, flat at all, and there's a lot of defects. That's why I'm not sanding. I'm just knocking the gloss down with this scotch Bright pad, and that'll be fine for the next coat. I'll put a little piece of tape on places that need some touch-up, and then after I sand, or after I go over everything with the scotch Bright pad, I will uh, do all the touch-ups at the same time. Okay, I've gone over uh, everything with a scotch Bright pad. I uh, caught a few more touch-ups that I had missed previously. I got them with a marker. And now I'm going to put on a coat of uh, satin water wax varnish. Uh, this will be the second coat for the drawer faces and the drawer sides, the third coat for the top. These have, uh, these have dried up just fine overnight. They're great. It looks good. I think I'm just going to give these a, a quick rub out. By rub out, you mean any, uh, any procedure that you follow after the final coat to uh, get the sheen, or to get it as smooth as you like, or, or to change the sheen, or whatever. Uh, anything that you do could be called a rub out. At first glance, this surface doesn't look like it needs a rub out. But very quickly, just by feel, there's like just thousands of little teeny nits on here. It's not perfectly smooth. Just airborne particles. Remember, this is a very slow drying finish. Also, the finish, the sheen is not even in areas. You can see streaks that uh, are a different sheen. And they also sort of follow the unevenness of this top also. And of course, that indicates that it could probably use another coat. I don't want to give it another coat because I don't want to put a lot of varnish on this thing. I put three coats on the top, two otherwise. I'm going to uh, see if I can uh, get rid of these nits and then go over it with some steel wool and wax and see if that evens out the unevenness of the sheen. I'm going to take a piece of craft paper. This is cut from a paper grocery bag. As smooth as the proverbial baby's bottom. 
Now I'll take some 4 aught steel wool and some uh, Howard's Feed and Wax Polish. I don't think we're ever going to know for sure what caused all this damage around the knobs. Typically, these things don't spin. You can see this shaft is square, and usually this is a square hole. In this case, they're, they're round. It can spin, can spin around. And then I think the knobs were loose. Everything spun around together. So, uh, the escutcheon pin will keep that plate from spinning and the lock washer should help keep these from spinning also. Well, there you have it. A really nice antique chest of drawers, uh, some sort of uh, maybe American Empire period, 1830s, 1840s. Uh, it was pretty beat up when it came in. And you know, this piece of furniture, this chest of drawers, uh, was used by a gentleman his entire life, from childhood. And so it's very important to the family that it, it be preserved. So I didn't sand it, I just uh, tried to get rid of the ugly parts. You know, you can't blame anyone for uh, wanting to take a sander and sanding this thing down, given the way that it looked. But it's funny to me because while people all over are taking their palm sanders and sanding these tops down in furniture factories all over the world, uh, building reproduction furniture, there's furniture finishers like myself trying desperately to make that furniture look like this. I love the texture of the top. All the scars and signs of wear and tear and use and history. I've got about 20 hours in this job and these are the tools and materials I used. If you're interested in the tools and materials I've used you'll see in various places a button that says view products and also in the, in the description, there's at the bottom of the description it says more. Click on that. And if you like my videos, comment, like, share, and feel free to uh, repost them on other platforms. I'd appreciate it.